Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we began our conquest of Mount Moon, and we caught quite a few rare Pokemon, and we also had an evolution on our team, which is really, really cool. First time encountering something like that, and hopefully not the last time by any stretch of the imagination. This time, we are going to be continuing on through Mount Moon, and possibly reaching the end. It depends on how much of an easy time we have in here. Because, as you can see, it's way bigger in here than a lot of people expect. So it's possible we might not even finish Mount Moon in this episode, which would be really unfortunate because I really want to finish Mount Moon in this episode. But we're just going to have to see how feasible it is, because it's entirely possible that we'll be up the Mount Moon Creek without a paddle at the 15 minute mark and be nowhere near done. And at that point, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Anyway, we're going to try and take out this Oddish right here. I'm not sure if we've seen Oddish yet. This might be a new Pokemon that we haven't encountered yet. Also, I kind of just punched my headset, although it was the side opposite of the mic, so hopefully it didn't pick up too terribly much. Hi. Alright. Anyway, down goes Oddish at the expense of quite a bit of HP, which is unfortunate. Next up is Bellsprout. I think I'm going to switch over to Nidorino because I think Poison resists Grass. I'm not positive. There are still some type matchups that even after like 15 years of playing this game, I still just don't remember. But I mean, it can't possibly be all my fault because I never played Generation 1 back when it was brand new and there are a lot of matchups that just aren't the same in this one. Also, I feel like Nidorino really, really illustrates something that I've been hesitant to bring up for a while. The back sprites in Generation 1 are so ugly, and like I have no idea why they have to be so low resolution compared to the Pokemon on the other side of the field. Like It seems completely pointless to me, and I know the Game Boy could handle higher resolution sprites because there are hacks out there that actually redo all of the sprites in this game, like replace all the sprites with the ones from Gold and Silver. So like, it's obviously possible on the Game Boy, I have no idea why they made the back sprites in Generation 1 just so awful. Uh, that's probably like my big complaint with this game. Not that the graphics are bad, but that the graphics could be a lot better, and we know they could be a lot better because it's been done a lot better in later Pokemon games on the same hardware. We're pulling a big job here. Get lost, kid. Alright, we have another Team Rocket guy here. Now, honestly, there's not a whole lot of Team Rocket in this cave. There's only like three or four guys total. So this this is really just like a little petty operation by Team Rocket. It's not really something that they really acknowledge in the story all that much. They just sort of mention it a couple times and then you just fight the guys and there's no big whole to-do about Team Rocket leaving or anything like that, it's just you fight the guys, you walk away. Which is a little bit weird considering how in later Pokemon games they always throw in a whole bunch of like cutscene and dialogue type stuff when it comes to encounters with evil teams like this. So you are good. I am good, thank you for noticing. Right here. We have TM01. I don't remember what that is. I know it sure as heck isn't Hone Claws or Dragon Claw or whatever they've made it in the new games. I don't remember. It is Mega Punch. Okay, that's an interesting one. Since Mega Punch was not a TM in Fire Red and Leaf Green, they actually added a move tutor near here that teaches it, which is really neat. Right there we have an Ether. That is an item that can restore power points. I I think I went over that already. I've always been hesitant to use items like that just because you can't actually buy those in shops in Pokemon. So they are a very much finite resource, so I've always been nervous to use them. But considering how old this game is and how obviously I'm not going to be transferring any items out of this game to future games, I'm probably just going to use them. In fact, I don't think there's any legitimate way to send items out of Generation 1 at all, because if you try and trade Generation 2, Pokemon in this game cannot hold items. That is a feature that was added in Gold and Silver, and of course, if you're going to be dumping your Generation 1 Pokemon into Bank whenever that comes out, because as of recording, we've heard nil about it, you can't transfer items into Pokemon Bank either. So yeah, your items are pretty much stuck in Red, Blue, and Yellow. 
that is where they are, and that is where they will stay. Anyway, I'm going to quick attack right here just to make absolutely sure I get a pointless critical hit. Uh, Alright. Looks like this youngster really, really likes Ratata. I have to wonder if any of them are in the top percentage of Ratata. Also, wow, quick attack is doing a lot of damage. That's actually really surprising to me. I didn't think quick attack would be more powerful than Thundershock. But, I mean, I guess we can go with it. Alrighty, up next is Zubat. We definitely want to keep Pikachu in for that one because of our trusty Thundershock attack. Alright. Anyway, gonna bring that down right there. Very nice. Alright. And we defeated the youngster. Losing stinks. I do agree, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but I mean, you can get over it. Right? Oh man, and even more Zubat. I never really understood the whole joke about Zubat being freaking everywhere before, but in this game it's particularly bad because usually it's like Zubat and a few other things, but in this cave it's like just Zubat and every once in a blue moon a Geodude. So yeah, I get it now. Mm, here's another Zubat! See, this is why Mount Moon takes so long, is because you can't have repels and there's wild Zubat every two steps. Ay 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 ay. Luckily, it gets us quite a bit of experience, which we're definitely going to need. Also, right there, we got a Moonstone. Nidorino will actually evolve into a further form if we use a Moonstone on it, so I could use that stone right now. However, like 99% of Pokémon that evolve by using a stone item will completely stop learning level up moves after you do it. So I'm going to be waiting a while to evolve Nidorino purely because I want it to keep learning moves for a little while. Whoa, you shocked me. Oh, you're just a kid. Well, I mean, I have a Pikachu, so I feel like the whole shocking thing couldn't be completely out of the question. Maybe I'm just being dumb at this point. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm looking at this map. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to complete this dungeon in this episode just because there's still quite a bit more for us to do, which is unfortunate, but them's the ropes when it comes to classic Pokemon, as it were. Anyway, since Nidorino has evolved, this double kick should do a lot more damage, and we even got a critical on there, which means this Geodude is so, so screwed. Oh, there he goes. Alrighty, up next is another Geodude. Yeah, Nidorino is almost certainly going to get level 17 in this battle just because of these hits that we're able to dish out. Alright, is that going to knock out? I'm doubtful. No, it does not. It's close, though. Alright, how much does Tackle do? Practically nothing, which I am very, very appreciative of. Alright, down goes another Geodude. And yep, there we go, level 17. Alright, I'm really feeling the whole level 17 thing right here, and now we have Onyx, which brings me to something really amusing. As you can tell, this guy is more powerful than Brock because he has two Geodude and an Onyx instead of one Geodude and an Onyx. So yeah, it makes me wonder what happens to trainers who don't start in Pallet Town, but instead start like in a way later part of the region. Like, do they have to fight super powerful gym leaders and then they get easier as they go on? My personal headcanon, and I feel like Pokemon Origins confirmed this pretty easily, I'm willing to bet the gym leaders in-universe have different teams depending on the skill levels of their opponents, which I think makes a lot of sense, and I think it's probably something they would have to do for an organization like the Pokemon League. Anyway, I'm just going to run from that Geodude because Pikachu... Because Pikachu can't really deal with it too terribly well. Oh man, that was literally two steps. I was just joking earlier about the, the whole two steps thing, but I think that right there pretty much confirms it right there. And I just said right there like six or seven times. I do apologize for that. Anyway, we are now in the basement proper. We've been to other portions of the basement before, but this is the portion of the basement that actually leads to the exit. Little kids should leave grown-ups alone. I take great offense to that statement, good sir. I am, in fact, 21 years old. I just look 10. Yep. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> okay. Alright, this Raditz is level 13, which is surprisingly high compared to the other things that we've encountered in this area up to this point. So, hopefully, we can bring things down here without too much trouble. Luckily, I have not used 
any of my potions yet, and I have a feeling they're going to be useful later on in this dungeon in pretty short order, so hopefully we'll be able to use those potions to our advantage. Alright, gonna just Thundershock you, and wow, that is perfect for capture if you weren't owned by an opponent, but unfortunately, you are owned by an opponent, so I can't rightly do that, now can I? Luckily, I don't think we're gonna be running into anything else in this area that we're gonna wanna catch, so we're pretty much good. I'm steamed. What, like steam as in the cloud gaming service, or steam as in codename steam, the underperforming 3DS exclusive, or steam as in actually steam? I'm such a dork. <laughs> Alright, Thundershock yet another zoo bat. Hey, hey. I hypothesized that we'd be getting the fossil in episode 8, but it's looking at this right that we might even not get it until episode 9, which is kind of insanity. Alright, let's wrap around this way. And another zoo bat. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. The thing is, before we get to the fossil, we have a decently major boss fight coming up, and that'll take up quite a bit of time, so this episode might wind up being a little bit short just because we're going to have some big battles coming up that we're going to want to be prepared for. And, oh wait, really? There used to be a Team Rocket guy there. Oh, I know what happens. There's a Rocket guy there in red and blue, but in yellow they decide to throw a little bit of a curveball at you, which should be interesting. Although I don't think that curveball happens until a little bit later on. Alright, going to grab that and... There's no item right there. I thought there was, but there's not, and... Yeah. Uh, so many wild Pokemon. So, so many wild Pokemon. Sheesh. Alright. I want to say there's an item here. Yes, there is another Moonstone, which is really nice. I only need one, but it's a really, really nice thing to have. Anyway, I am going to head over... Here's probably good. Right there, you can see those fossils. Those are the fossils I want to get. Well, I want to get at least one of them. But first things first, I am going to use a potion on Pikachu. And I think that's probably okay for now. But anyway, I think we are going to be ending things off right about here. I know this video is a little bit shorter than usual. I hypothesize we're right around 13 or 14 minutes. But the thing is, as soon as we walk up to this guy, we're going to be in a boss fight, and that boss fight could extend the video significantly if it doesn't go really, really well, and I highly doubt it's going to go that well. So I think we're going to end things off. So, this past episode of Pokemon Yellow, we conquered most of the rest of Mount Moon, but I think the rest is going to have to wait until next time. So next time on Pokemon Yellow, we are going to be wrapping up Mount Moon and hopefully not losing horribly to this guy, who I can recall has given me some grief in the past. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Kitty, Yosei Pokemon, Takasa, 0.6 meter, Omosa, 7.5 kilogram, Aikuroshi Sugatakara. ペット用に人気がある。ただし、なかなか見つけられない。